What's going on insiders? I want to talk to y'all today about what I found to be the easiest way to work a topwater plug. Topwater can be a little bit intimidating, but it really is such a great search bait. So working it the proper way is very important. I always tell clients that, you know, when they're working a topwater plug, I'm going to stay on them until they're working it right. Cause you're going to get 10 blow ups to one uh, if you're walking the plug in the correct way. And this is for a walk the dog style topwater plug. So when you throw that cast out there, it's important to keep that rod tip low. If you're up in the air like this, you've got a lot of slack from your rod tip down to your bait. Uh, which makes it harder to work that bait properly. There's times and applications to work the rod tip high like this, but 99% of the time, since I'm right-handed, I'm gonna keep my rod tip low and to my left, right above the water, uh, and just do small twitches like this. The reeling is just to keep the slack out of the line. You don't wanna be retrieving the bait with the reel. You want the bait to be coming to you because of the twitches and the reeling just to be keeping that line tight. So uh, low into the left, little twitches and keep that plug walking. You wanna zigzag back and forth motion that's pretty you know, timed out properly. Uh, if I was left-handed, I'd do it this way. I can't do that myself. I wish I could. Uh, but, but just keeping that rod tip low into the left is really going to help you work the topwater plug more effectively. I want to talk to you all about how I change up my retrieve with a topwater plug if I'm targeting redfish as opposed to speckled trout. I'm going to start with redfish. The important thing about a redfish is, or a topwater plug thrown for a redfish, is keeping that bait moving. They don't like when it slows down and they don't like when it stops. So if I throw that plug out there, you know, I'm going to start working at a one, two, one, two, one, two pace, just kind of keeping a steady movement back to the boat. And if a fish blows it up and misses it, I'm going to keep it moving at that pace or even speed it up a little bit. You want that, that red fish to really feel like that bait's trying to get out of that area. And that fires that red fish up and will oftentimes come to eat it again. Another important thing with redfish and speckled trout when throwing a topwater plug is not to set the hook right when you see the blow up. You want to keep working that bait. Honestly, I always tell my clients, don't ever, don't, don't even pre pretend you didn't even blow it up and just keep working that bait until you feel pressure build up on your rod tip. And that's when you want to set the hook. If you go set the hook, as soon as he blows the water up out of, uh, or blows the plug up out of the water, you'll just rip it back to the boat and you'll never hook him and you never have another chance. If you keep working it, if he misses it, that plug's still right there in that zone and it's ready for that fish to come eat it again. So to, it's, it's really easy to get excited, but try to keep that plug uh, near the fish. So like I was saying, you want to keep that bait moving for redfish with speckled trout. The, the, other, the difference between the redfish and the speckled trout is I'll oftentimes pause the plug during the retrieve. So if I throw that bait out there and I'm working it back to the boat, I'll go, you know, one, two, three, four, five twitches. Let it sit for a second or two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let it sit for a second or two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let it sit for a second or two. And what that does is it, it lets those trout get under it. They love to get underneath the plug and look up at it. And most of your bites are going to come while it's sitting still or right when you begin to twitch it again after a pause. They'll come blow it up right then. Uh, the other important thing to think about is, is your retrieve speed overall. So really all you got to look at is your water temperature in the, colder winter, in the colder winter months, obviously, but then also fall and spring. Sometimes it's important to slow that bait down a little bit. Uh, and in the summer, the fish are you know, more aggressive and they're traveling around and they're more apt to eat a topwater plug. You can really get away with moving that bait fast. And the reason that I love using this bait for a search bait in the summer and spring is how quickly and, and well you can cover a piece of water and understand are there fish there? Are there not fish there? Should I come back and pick it apart with a jig head or, or another lure? Or should I keep moving to the next spot? So I'm not always looking to hook the fish on the topwater plug. If they move, if they come up and you know blow it up and miss it, I know they're there. I know it's time to back off. You know, maybe try the topwater plug a little bit more or pick up a spinning rod with a, with a jig head or, or you know, a chatterbait or something subsurface that I can throw to those fish uh, and, and pick up that, that weren't fully committing to the topwater plug. I want to talk to you all about uh, how effective a topwater is as a search bait and kind of how I'm using it as a search bait. The nice thing about a topwater is it's got a lot of presence in the water. So a bait I consider a search bait is a bait that's going to, you know, attract fish from further away than just a small little jig head or something like that. Uh, so when I'm working a topwater plug, I'm not throwing it at the same place twice unless I moved a fish or had a blow up there that I missed. I, I feel like depending upon the plug, you have about a five to eight foot range. So a lot of times you're gonna move fish that are five to eight feet away to your plug to eat it. But outside of that, you're probably not gonna get any interest or, or any movement. So as I'm going down a bank, I'm gonna throw, you know, at a little point or a little cove or a little creek mouth, work it. Then I'm gonna go eight feet to the right, work it. So that would be me trolling motoring or wading or walking or, or kayaking down a bank. Um, just, just hitting those, those sections that are about five to eight feet apart. So if this was the creek we were fishing, you know, I might throw a cast here work that bait back. I don't get blown up. I'm reeling it in, casting out to the point, which is about eight feet past that, working it across the point. 
until you get in. I'll, I'll always work a topwater plug until I can see underneath the plug. I can't tell you how many times I've had a trout or a redfish blow the bait up as I'm lifting it out of the water when I'm still 15 feet away from the boat. So work that plug all the way to the boat. And when you know there's no fish under it, go again. And this time I'm going 10 feet out off the bank, off the point. And if I'm just topwater fishing, I know, all right, there's no fish from this, this cove to that point that's going to eat this topwater plug. I'm moving on to the next spot. There's something about the water that'll give you peace All by yourself or with your family Live salt strong and wet a line today